For more than 60 years, motorists passing through New Hampshire have been paying to use portions of the state's highway system. And as technology has evolved, they've used various forms of currency to do it. The New Hampshire Turnpike system developed in the early 1950s because of congestion and lack of money. In 1955, the first automatic toll machine in the country was installed at Merrimack. Easy Pass arrived a decade ago, and open road tolling, using just gantries and no toll booths or collectors, first went online in May of 2010. Bill Boynton of the New Hampshire Department of Transportation has had a front row seat for the transition to transponders. Our big concern was when we push the button, will it work? And, and that, that was not the problem. It, it worked from the start, but just people getting used to the idea of electronic tolling. Privacy concerns was also part of it that, we, that we've dealt with in, in law. And, uh, and now it's just a very much an accepted part of travel in New Hampshire. As Rhode Island looks to install its own tolling system for trucks under the Roadworks program, state officials here could learn a lot from their neighbor to the north which has one of the oldest turnpike systems in the country. The technology in New Hampshire and other states has taken a huge step from the introduction of the Easy Pass system in the late 1980s. Most people don't like the idea of tolling, and yet a toll is a user fee. You're, you're paying for use of the highway. In our state, most of our turnpike system is in the southern part of the state where the heavier uh, traffic volume is, where the commuters are, and it's become, you know, an accepted part of of, of travel. Now, does that mean people divert and don't and go on other roads? They can, but you know, time is money. And if you want to spend an extra 10 minutes going through traffic signals and, and uh, two lane highways, then, then that's your choice. But uh, you know, that hasn't been reflected in the, in the increasing traffic volumes that we see on a regular basis on our turnpike system. Boynton says the technology is sophisticated and nearly foolproof. Our gantries are 99.95% accurate. There's three components to it. Uh, as you're approaching the plaza, uh, there's the identification of the vehicle uh, of speeds between zero and 100 miles an hour. This gantry can identify the vehicle. The vehicles can be as little as three feet apart. Uh, then there's the classification of the vehicle as to what kind of vehicle it is. How many axles does it have? How many tires does it have? Uh, then, then it becomes part of the enforcement. Is, is the read there for the transponder? If not, then that triggers the cameras for front and rear pictures, high uh, intensity pictures of the, of the license plates. And so all of that takes place within a very few seconds. In addition to the gantry, there's loops in the pavement. I mean, it's, it's pretty sophisticated uh, in terms of uh, all of this stuff that has to work. And, and occasionally we have maintenance, but, but in terms of uh, accuracy and consistency, uh, you know, I can't remember an, an instance where we've had a, a day where somebody called and said, you know, something's not working at the, at the, at the ORT lane. So it, they're like 100% accurate, 24 seven. While New Hampshire will continue to use a combination of open road tolling and the option of toll booths like this station between Manchester and Concord, some states are transitioning to entirely open road tolling. Massachusetts plans to eliminate all of its toll booths and have gantries only by the end of this year. A mammoth transition going from 32 tolling locations to 16 gantries. For those states, the question becomes, how much do you spend to go after vehicles that don't have transponders and therefore aren't paying, either accidentally or intentionally? Somebody in a processing center in our case, out of state, is reading these images, and then they have to be compared and uh, sent to to uh, Division of Motor Vehicles in various states, and then make sure they know who the owner is, and then the, 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 the process continues. Our highest volume users from out of state are Maine and Massachusetts by far, and we have, uh, I believe, the first of its kind in the country where we have reciprocity agreements that go back several years with both Massachusetts and Maine, whereby if you're a chronic violator and have not uh, cleaned up your account when you come to, when it comes time to register your vehicle you walk in and they say you have a problem here you cannot register your vehicle until you clear up this account and so that's the hammer that really proves to be quite effective at the end of the process so obviously if somebody you know is from Nevada or something and goes through once that, that becomes somewhat prohibitive to to pursue that person but it's probably not a good idea to be a chronic offender because you know we have 
other ways of, of making sure that we catch up with you. New Hampshire gives motorists who pass through without a transponder a chance to be proactive and pay online within seven days before hearing from the state. Rhode Island DOT Director Peter Alviti told us the state last month hired the Jacobs Engineering Group, headquartered in California, to oversee the design, construction, and implementation of the toll program. New Hampshire gives them the option of going online and being able to do it so you don't have to chase them. Correct. Is that part of your plan too? Yes, or, I'm sure. or is it gonna a camera gonna take the truck, distinguishing it from the car? or the smaller truck, yeah. and then say, you know, Mr. Easy Express from Delaware, you mm -hmm. owe X amount. Right. Both ways? I or? expect I expect that we'll be using both ways, although that, again, is the reason that we're bringing a company like Jacobs in, who has experience in many other um, uh, states, uh, New Hampshire being one of them, uh, in how to implement this and get the best return for the dollar that you put out to collect. It eventually comes down to how much money do you have to spend to go after the money, doesn't right. it? Right. That's right. That's exactly right. And uh, you know, it's not something a lot of toll uh, toll authorities would want to talk about. But yeah, yeah, it's really a, a cost-effective type thing. And what we really don't want to be in the in the in the violation business. And as I said, we have very low percentage of people who actually violate. So most of the time, it's done by accident. We were a little tougher initially, and we just found that you know we were chasing people all over the place, and uh, it really was not productive from a customer service point of view. While Rhode Island officials have been adamant that only trucks will be told, Boynton says once the technology is in place, the ability to identify and toll all vehicles is readily available. If you're able to classify a certain type of vehicle, there's nothing preventing you from changing that classification. Rhode Island and New Hampshire have different goals and methods in tolling, but the reason for both is the same. There's virtually no states that aren't facing infrastructure issues, and we're talking about long periods of neglect, and that's why we're trying to play catch up. I mean, for example, with the stimulus year, people thought, well, you got your one year, what's your problem? That was, we needed 10 years of stimulus. So the cost of maintaining uh, roads and bridges in this country has gone up astronomically, and while people think they're already paid for, it's no different than your house or your car. You have to continue to invest in them. Uh, and if you want to have a thriving economy in your state, you better have a good transportation system. Otherwise, uh, people are going to decide to locate somewhere else. In New Hampshire, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report.